My name is Alice Haiti. I'm the co-founder of Earthrise and I am so happy and excited to be here with a friend and someone I admire so much, a leading climate voice, Shia Bastida, who also has just been chosen as one of Time 100's most influential people of the year. Hey girl! Hey! How are you? I'm good. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How does it feel? I mean, this is like in a long list of accolades for you, but how does it feel to be recognized by Time 100? It feels great to, I don't know, make it in a list that's not just about people having impact or advocacy or, right. or a climate list. It's, yeah. it's a list of artists, of authors, of creatives. So it feels that we are permeating into the cultural space of, of media, of narrative, Finally. which is where we need to be. Yes. So I'm extremely proud of that. Yeah, and you're in good company and way, way beyond the climate space, which 100%. is, as you say, um, recently I was in London uh, at the overheated Billie Eilish event mm. and I was having similar thoughts, like we need these huge popular culture voices to, to add their voice. Um, we're not going to do it without it. Yeah. We're here right now in New York um, at the UN headquarters, but also at the SDG pavilion. Um, what do you think of that framework of the SDGs and where we're at in terms of fighting for them? I remember hearing about the SDGs a long time ago and I thought they were the thing that was going to get us towards that world um, of justice, of, of a just development, of a sustainable development. Yeah. But the truth is that the SDGs haven't been taken seriously by many, many heads of state, by many countries. Yeah. And when they are, it's by goal, right? It's like SDG 5 or SDG 13, um, women and gender or climate, yeah. climate action. Uh, people forget about SDG 17, partnership among the goals. And I think that is what we have been missing as humanity, as in the, in the climate movement, everywhere, that partnership of we are all in this crisis and we all need to work together to go beyond. Um, but of course, Global South is affected the most. Women and girls are affected the most. I recently read a statistic that shocked me so much. 87% of people under 30 live in the Global South. 87, wow. That means in a room of 10 youth, almost nine, eight or nine should be from the Global South. And that is not the type of representation that we're seeing. And so for me, the SDG goals are all about making sure that people are visible, that people are, that solutions are visible and that they are, you know, permeating across sectors. Mm. You mentioned partnership and collaboration and it makes me think of the collective and I know that this focus on the collective is something you are so deeply passionate about, it is in your DNA, you are of indigenous heritage. Um, how does that frame your lens on the work that you do? So I think a lot of the uh, space of nonprofits and activism can be a bit competitive. It's like who's funding what, uh, what youth are having access to spaces, what organizations are being trusted to hold, um, you know, resources, etc. And that mindset of how NGOs have historically competed during Earth Day to get funding or all of these things is what keeps us separated and doesn't allow us to work together. So we are in a spirit of radical collaboration of reimagining the climate movement and to that end for example my organization is going to make every single transaction that we make public wow. we are saying they use transparency full transparency everything that we spent money on everybody will be able to know and that is an example not only for the youth movement as a whole but for companies and governments we're asking for transparency if there if we don't know the data if we don't know what's behind all of these decisions and institutions how are we going to know what to advocate for so we are saying we're going to do it because you haven't which is kind of what we did you know, at other spaces when we say, like, we're not paid by the fossil fuel industry. Like, we're showing ourselves what we're doing, so to contrast. You've mentioned your organization. I want everyone to know the name of it, but also just beyond that, you wear so many hats, you're studying, you do so, you're on these endless stages, um, speaking with endless organizations. What is your focus right now in the day-to-day? -day? Um, and what, I guess, just as a final note, because we're running out of time, um, what is your goal if we were sat together again in one year from now at the next climate week? Where do you want to be? Mm. So my organization is called Re-Earth Initiative and we are focused on reimagining systems and activism and collaboration. So that's why we're called Re-Earth Initiative. Um, something that 
What was the second question? What you, you're wearing so many hats, oh, yeah. that's your main focus right now, but just finally, in one year's time, where do you want to be? Where should so, we be? yeah, my main focus right now is specifically to bridge the youth underground with the youth in international negotiation spaces and make sure that we're working together because there is this feeling from the youth in the ground that the people at the UN are not doing enough and right. vice versa. So bridging that. And one year from now, I want, um, I want a COP cover decision that says that we're facing out of fossil fuels. I also want in writing. in writing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want that funding uh, to go to the Global South, the, the Loss and Damage Fund, for, that, for us to be at that space where that's happening. Did you hear that? Phasing out fossil fuels. Um, thank you, my love. Thank you for thank being you here. So and thank much. you for your time. Thank you.